Hey, it's Larry Nimmer. I'm here in downtown LA at the courthouse, bringing you various interviews about the Conrad Murray hearings. Let's take a look. I've got a group that I run. It's called Aerial Banner, and all the fans donate from five dollars to fifty to a hundred. Your Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you for your support. Thanks for flying the plane, everything. You guys are wonderful. Uh -huh. How's the family holding up, like Catherine and Joe? Catherine Jackson is just in tears in most of these hearings. She goes home and she's just devastated by this. She's very upset. Mr. Jackson, Joe Jackson, who I talk to regularly, my goodness, he says, they killed my son and he is absolutely devastated. I need a today? federal Becca, investigation. Becca, Becca. One of the witnesses made a statement that while they were inside the residence, Dr. Conrad Murray asked them did they know how to, how to do CPR. I feel that it's going along well, but a lot of things are said I didn't agree with, but it's okay. How do you feel about him saying that Conrad didn't know how to do CPR? Oh, that's ludicrous. He's a doctor, and especially a heart doctor, and don't know how to do CPR. That's the biggest lie I've ever been told. It's very important uh, that Catherine knows that we are here to support her. She came up to me, she shook my hand, and she thanked me for being here. And I looked at her and I told her that uh, she gives me strength. I looked at her and I said, you give me strength. She is uh, the Mother Teresa of the New Age, man. Give it up for Catherine Jackson. We love you, Catherine. There was a little something for everybody in the hearing on day two in the preliminary hearing. It helped the prosecution a lot. I thought that the paramedic testified uh, that Dr. Murray did not tell him about the propofol in Michael Jackson's system because that's pretty basic. An emergency, emergency personnel, they have to know. I think the most important testimony to me was the concern that Dr. Murray expressed after the death about returning back to the home to obtain the cream. I'm not sure what he meant, but it seemed to be a curious question to ask at that point, given the magnitude of events that had already transpired. I think he's a quack doctor, and I think he's the one that killed him. And I don't think he committed suicide like his defense lawyer says. The only happiness we had was to see the Jacksons on TV. Oh. What, why, what were things like for you back things then? Things were pretty rough. But when entertainment came on, there he was, just spinning around, little Mike, with his brim tilted to the side. <laughs> oh, man, I couldn't wait to see him. Then his sister got involved. Oh, the Jacksons was just bad. Why do you feel he needs justice? Um, he gave his whole life to helping other people. He influenced others through his music. His whole life, since he was about 10 years old. And, you know, it's not right that he was taken so soon and under these circumstances. To me, it's just not the same without Michael. And Janet, if you're listening, I need you more than ever now, girl. <laughs> Please, Janet. <laughs> well, this has been footage at the downtown LA courthouse about the Conrad Murray hearing. I'm in downtown LA, Larry Nimmer. See you next time.